Hey TCS TV viewers, it is Dave and Evelyn from the Camera Store and today we're talking about the Leica Q2. Yes, now this camera has been announced for quite a while and we've had plenty of time to shoot with it. We've also put it in the hands of our good friend Ron Bubnik who's a street photographer and he brought this camera with him to Japan. We talk to people about the Q2 and the price point is mentioned, people's response is usually like, well, it's a Leica and yeah, it has the red Leica badge on it. But we want to talk to you about why Leica cameras are more prestigious and why they have that big price point slapped on it. Is it worth the extra money? Yeah, so I mean, I do feel special walking around with a red dot on a camera. I don't, I'm not going to lie. So special, <laughs> special. But when I think about Leica, the first thing that comes to mind are optics. And this is no slouch. So this is a 28 millimeter 1.7 Sumalux lens, and it's absolutely gorgeous. This 28 millimeter lens on the Q2 is a little bit wider than the original, and that's to accommodate some of the new weather ceiling. Otherwise, this lens is proven to be a beautiful lens with amazing bokeh balls, and it's a real pleasure to work with. Now, you can switch between manual focus and autofocus fairly easily and it has this nice clickable aperture ring but the coolest feature that I really like is you do have this ability to switch into macro mode and when you turn it into that mode it actually changes the focus distance scale for you automatically and so you can see that right on the lens. And this makes the camera that much more versatile so I'm already finding myself you know always switching into macro I come across some really cool detail and I love that feature. Now I did find the switching over to back to autofocus that little switch took me a little while to get used to but well, now that I've got it I'm okay with it but at first I remember I'm like why is it not autofocusing <laughs> <laughs> now when it comes to 28 millimeters it is a fairly wide frame on a full frame sensor but if you're someone that prefers the 35 millimeter 50 or even 75 millimeters you have enough resolution to crop in on the sensor and so you can work with those crop lines get your framing right for 35 millimeters or of course you can do that in post now keep in mind though when you get to 75 millimeters you're starting to get into the single digits in terms of resolution we're talking seven megapixels that point. So this camera features a brand new 47.3 megapixel sensor. Now we also have an ISO range of 50 to 50,000 which allows us to get the proper exposure in just about any lighting situation. Now more importantly though we do have 13 stops of dynamic range and this allows me a lot of flexibility in post-production when it comes to working with these files and it's actually saved me several times already. Now I personally really like the colors I'm getting out of this camera. When I import these files into my Lightroom library, I barely have to do anything with them. They look so good. Now they also shoot in a DNG format which makes them easy to work with with any editing suite. When we start to think about who this camera is for, the answer could be pretty much anybody. I know there are a lot of people out there that think Leica cameras are sort of intimidating, that they need to have a full understanding of manual operation, but that's not actually true. In fact, the Q2 has some automatic settings where you can put this thing in full auto and let the camera do the thinking for you. And as you slowly want to add some more custom control to it, you can put it in program-like modes where you just have, say, the shutter speed or the ISO or the aperture in auto mode and you have control over everything else. Now, if you want to have full manual operation down to the focusing, you can do that too. And so this camera really gives you a lot of flexibility in a really nice package. They really are just such beautiful cameras and I really want one. And I wanted the original one too. And the Q2 is actually very similar to the Q and there's a few changes that they made it even better. So one of them is this nice texture on the front that makes it a little bit easier to hold on to. And I really like it. It doesn't really change the sleekness of it too much at all. I also really love that they moved the continuous shooting and single shooting off of that on off switch so you don't accidentally turn the camera off when you're switching between them. There's a little control pad on the back, which is really nice to operate. Now, it's not quite big enough or fast enough to move your autofocus points around, but it is nice to have to navigate through the menu. You also have a touch screen to work with, and this LCD screen is pretty good to look at outside. It's a million dots, so it's not quite as high resolution as some of the modern mirrorless cameras that we're seeing new screens on, but it's decent enough that you have it to navigate through and to look back at your images. 
There is a really nice upgrade in the EVF as well. It has better optics and it's no longer a field sequential EVF, which means you don't have that RGB color splitting they're seeing in the queue. And so it no longer looks like you're looking at an old TV through the viewfinder. Another nice welcome feature for Dave is the lockable diopter. The other thing that I really like is this magazine style battery door. So you just have to give it an extra little push to pull the battery out, which is nice so you don't accidentally drop your battery out of the camera. It also has a separate SD card slot which is still a really nice high quality feeling door and has a really positive response when you click the card out. Now one thing I was very surprised about this camera was the frame rate. So it is capable of 10 frames per second with mechanical with autofocus, 20 frames per second with electronic shutter, although you do give up some resolution. Now the buffering is pretty decent at 25 frames in JPEG and about 14 in DNG. So I'm quite impressed with the autofocus of this camera. It does use a contrast based system very similar to what Panasonic has to offer. We have up to 225 autofocus points to play with and a host of other different modes. There is tracking focus and of course face detection which is new on this camera and I use that one a lot. Now we also have touch focus we want to use. The shutter is extremely quiet so if you're in a museum or a church or something that's very sound sensitive you're not drawing attention to yourself when you are taking pictures. So Brennan I think like a Q2 should be our next video camera. Yeah you can't wait to plug your headphones into it? No you can't. Oh. You can't How about a microphone? No. How about a USB-C anything? No, <laughs> the, Q, the Q2 doesn't have any ports whatsoever. And that would have been a really nice addition, obviously for charging and if you wanted to do any kind of serious videography, but sadly it doesn't have it. But you can shoot 4K DCI footage. Um, it looks pretty decent and the autofocus is fairly smooth, has an elegant look to it, but you do still get a little bit of that Panasonic wobble, which Brennan's used to because we mostly shoot on a GH5. And you also have to watch out for a rolling shutter. Yeah. But otherwise, <laughs> wouldn't this be nice? One of the things that I really want to know about the Q2 and other Leica cameras is why people are willing to invest so much more in one of these Leica cameras. Yeah, there's a lot of very compelling options on the market. I mean, the build quality is excellent. And But how much are people paying for the red dot? That's true. So we talked to our bearded Leica collector <laughs> friend, Ron Bubnik, who's also a street photographer, and he brought the Q2 with him to Japan. And so we wanted to find out if this would make his list of Leicas. So we found Ron. We're in his neighborhood of Bridgeland at Shiki Minya because he's having a little bit of ramen uh, Japan homesickness. Yeah, so hopefully this actually satiates it just a little bit. Yes, we get to have some ramen. Yep, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, Ron, ever since I've known you, which has been for many years now, uh, you've always had a Leica. So yep. I really want to know, what was it that made you drink the Leica Kool-Aid? Well, a really nice person had let go of their M3 to me, and that kind of started the ball rolling, as I've always appreciated the build quality that goes into these items and the character that comes out of their glass. Yeah, I can see why a lot of people love Leica cameras, and it's obviously not just about the brand. I think a lot of digital cameras right now are, they feel a lot like computers or just tools attached to lenses, but a Leica camera, it really feels like a luxury watch or maybe more of like a timepiece. And what do you think it is about the Leica camera in terms of the build and just the overall feel of it that makes it like that? This is totally right in you saying that it is a luxury item, okay. The build quality, the overall construction of the item, they're built in Wetzlar from the ground up and they're handmade. So you are buying that Rolex, you are buying that Bentley. Yes, it is a tool, it is meant to be a tool and a very precise one at that. And so you're paying all this crazy overhead for an item that is basically cobbled together by hands and very fancy and extraordinary machines. Now, of all the cameras, all the Leicas that you could have chose from, why did you choose the Q2? Well, I wanted to put it through its paces. I wanted to see what the autofocus improvements were, what uh, the sensor was all about, the stabilizer on there, all the things that make this camera the upper tier of what Leica has for a convenience compact. Do you think all those little upgrades make the, the price difference worth it? Yeah, totally. Everything was improved. The, the battery life, the viewfinder was gorgeous in some scenarios. Low light performance was great. The last time that I went to Japan with you, there are a few moments that I can remember 
where the light there was absolutely stunning and we actually literally chased it. I remember there was one where you actually cheered me on to go chase some girls on scooters yep. and that was my favorite shot from the trip. Was right. there anything on this trip for you that was like that? Were you able to like really nail something that you saw and you just had to get a photo of it? There was in Ueno, there was a gentleman who was riding a bike and taking a rest for a second, and it was incredibly hot, so he was a little bit on the sweatier side, and I think the camera had no issue locking like the highlights, the contrasts, and possibly the face of the gentleman while he was looking at the camera. There was another one of a young man who was kind of crouched down nearby, and he had some uh, backlight coming off of him, but I guess the light coming from also the sidewalk in front of him was reflecting a good amount back, so I kind of nailed him as well. And there was another one in low light that I caught another person who was very uniquely dressed in Harajuku and uh, the colors bouncing off their vibrant clothing made for a pretty good shot as well. So how was lunch with Ron? It was good. You missed out on some awesome I know. ramen. Shiki Minya is Next so time. Good. Next Chili time. Chili Goma is what you need to get. <laughs> but yeah, I had a great time talking to Ron about the Q2. And I think talking to him and also using this camera myself, I'm really starting to understand why Leica users become cult members. <laughs> now, I was wanting to hate this camera. I didn't want to join that pretentious club of Leica owners and drink the Kool-Aid Kool and, culture. you know, <laughs> here's my red dot. Like I've, I've arrived. Yes. But the more I use this camera, the more I fell in love with it. Um, I love the simplicity of it. The lens is gorgeous. The files mm -hmm. are gorgeous out of this camera. And it really brings me back to just wanting to take pictures and not play with the camera so much. Yeah, right? it's so nicely manufactured and it does really bring you back to basics while still giving you that amazing image quality. Yeah, now I wish they would have added a little bit better grip to this. I mean, I would mm. put an optional grip on here potentially. You I like. Yeah, a, you like those big grips. I like those big grips a little bit. But overall, um, you know, I fell in love with this camera and I want one. So Leica, if you want to donate one to me, I will certainly take it. <laughs> yeah, well, we want to hear what you guys think of the Leica Q2 and any other Leica cameras that you've had an experience with. So please comment below and let us know what you thought of the review. Yes, make sure you follow us on Instagram. And if you're new to our channel, please subscribe and hit that notification dial so we can catch you again really soon.